Uh, Minister, long COVID is tough on individuals who are dealing with ongoing health problems like tiredness, uh, trouble thinking clearly and breathing issues. But it's not just having an impact on individuals, it's also having a profound impact on our workforce, presenting challenges that are complex and far-reaching. A report just published by the EU Commission provides estimates on the prevalence of long COVID and its impact on people's ability to work. This indicates that the prevalence of long COVID in the EU population at 2.9% in 2022, resulting in a negative impact on labour market supply of between 0.3 and 0.5 of 1%. In personal equivalence, uh, these figures uh, mean long COVID could be reducing labour market supply here in Ireland by over 12,500 people. That's combining the effects of uh, lower productivity, higher sick leave, lower hours worked, increased uh, unemployment and underemployment. Of course, the real number of individuals impacted will be much higher because this is only a statistical model. But these may very well be, figures may very well be far worse because the sole indicator of the magnitude of long COVID challenge here in Ireland, based on actual Irish data, depends on a survey that I commissioned last year. It suggests that an estimated 5% of adults are living with symptoms of long COVID, which would equate to the impact on the labour market of over 22,000 person equivalents. This is not only leading to a significant reduction in labour supply in an economy at full employment, but it also has long-term implications for society as a whole. Minister, uh, what these figures highlight is an urgent need for adaptive workplace policies and comprehensive health support services. Sadly, we're still waiting for the regional long COVID clinics to be fully functional despite being promised in September 2021. Furthermore, the mental health repercussions of the pandemic and long COVID cannot be overstated. There has been an increase in demand for mental health services driven by the pandemic's exacerbation of mental health issues. For example, the increased prevalence of antipsychotic drug prescribing points to a deterioration in mental well-being, particularly among younger, and uh, older people. Minister, we need an action plan which not only acknowledges the challenges post-COVID and that of long COVID, but one that helps people to recover, to return to work, and most importantly, to become full contributors to our society once again. Minister. Yeah. Deputy, thanks for raising this issue. And to be fair, you've been really consistent in raising this issue. Um, for many months now uh, in terms of keeping the government under, under focus and, and pressure in terms of an adequate response. Um, can I just uh, put on the record the, uh, uh, the, the fact that the European Commission has made a non-binding recommendation now on the recognition of COVID-19 as, as an occupational disease. Uh, it did not make uh, a recommendation though in relation to long COVID, which I know is the issue you're raising primarily. The decision regarding recognition is, is a member state com competency. Uh, it's important to note that recognition in Ireland would not encompass long COVID and would only apply to new claims for new cases of COVID-19 uh, and it would not benefit those who contracted COVID-19 during the pandemic, which is primarily the cohort that you're talking about. Uh, the report published by the Minister for Social Protection and laid before the Oireachtas last November found that COVID-19 does not meet the criteria for recognition as an occupational illness, illness under the Social Welfare Consolidation Act. Uh, specifically, it found that presumptions about workplace transmission would not be sustainable on a general basis uh, in the current environment. Uh, the government, uh, uh, as you know, did an awful lot during the pandemic and subsequently in terms of supporting people uh, who, uh, uh, whose work was impacted uh, by the fact that they had COVID for an extended period of time. Um, uh, we had an enhanced il illness uh, payment and uh, uh, system and el eligibility criteria uh, that uh, set uh, to maximise the, the number of workers that could apply for it. Uh, that scheme paid out some 780 
uh, 88,000 claims uh, at a cost of uh, over 350 million. Uh, a temporary scheme of paid leave uh, was also developed by the Department of Health uh, for certain public uh, health sector employees who were unfit for work after a COVID-19 infection. Uh, special leave with pay for COVID-19 was also introduced for public sector workers. The Department of Social Protection continues to provide a suite of income supports for those who can't work due to illness and disability, including those uh, that have not recovered following a, a, a COVID-19 related illness. Uh, COVID-19, though, doesn't meet the criteria for recognition as an, as an occupational illness under the Social Welfare uh, Consolidation Act. Specifically, presumptions around workplace transmission would not be uh, sustainable uh, on a general basis uh, in the current environment where infection rates are low. In other words, uh, um, uh, uh, there isn't a sufficient level of proof that uh, that people got COVID uh, uh, through their participation in the workforce as opposed to getting it through community transition. So um, what I'm saying uh, is that various different departments, the Department of Health, the Department of Social Protection, my department are looking at ways in which we can respond to, to people who are unable to work due to uh, uh, extended illness linked to Thank COVID. You. Thank you, uh, I, I accept that the, the government does need to to progress you, uh, and quickly uh, the regional long COVID clinics which have been promised uh, and we will certainly from a Department we're of Enterprise time, perspective uh, keep this Mr. issue Mr. under Mr. close Mr. review. Uh, Minister Deputy Grealish, Deputy Canny uh, and I as three Galway TDs believe that the government should uh, reconsider its decision to terminate at the end of this month the special leave entitlement for frontline healthcare workers who are unable to return to work due to long COVID. These 143 staff contracted COVID-19 before a vaccine was available and in many instances before sufficient PPE was available. They've been suffering from long COVID symptoms now for over two years. <coughs> Minister, frontline workers were publicly commended here in Dáil Éireann during the pandemic for risking their lives as well as that of their families to deliver essential services. But the vast majority of them with long COVID symptoms have been ignored by the state through its failure to recognise the occupational, uh, recognise it as an occupational illness. And Minister, the very least we should do is to support this small number of healthcare workers now in their hour of need. And finally, Minister, can I ask you to look at the labour market implications of long COVID on foot of the recent uh, EU report on this? Thank you. Minister, to conclude. Yeah, Deputy, as I said, the, uh, the temporary scheme of paid leave was developed by the Department of Health for certain public health sector employees uh, who were unfit for work after a COVID-19 infection. Uh, that scheme, as you say, is, is due uh, to end uh, on the 31st of March, which is the end of this month. Um, but I'll, I'll raise the issue with the, with the Minister and ask him to come back to you directly rather than, rather than giving you a, a, a sort of a stale answer here. But I can, I can understand what you're saying. What I'd like to understand is the numbers that are impacted. Uh, and their uh, circumstances, which I presume the Department of Health has. Um, but I'll ask um, uh, Minister Donnelly to come back directly to you on it, if that's helpful.